Yeah, good evening. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Monday, the 3rd of September 2018. This is just my weekly video, which is a longer video where I go over every pair that I'm trading on the daily charts on both the high probability and the mod MACD methods. So, two methods on 20, I think it's 27 pairs, I'm not sure exactly. Um, so, this video goes for, will go for about 30 minutes. I'm sorry if I sound a bit <coughs> croaky or flat, coming down with some cold and flu symptoms. So we'll go through every chart. Um, now we'll go through the high probability charts first. That's um, the sort of my main system. Uh, as usual, the profile set up. So the extended ones, as you can see, extended pairs are the ones with trades actually open. The sh smaller ones with the title bars indented, that's trades, no trades on those pairs. So we'll run through them all. Start with the USD Japanese Yen, as usual. Nothing doing there at the moment. Market very flat and sideways, no trade on at all. Euro Pound in a sell trade here, and obviously it's going against me. Uh, yeah, it's, you can see, always draw my divergence. Bearish divergence is always the red lines. Bullish divergence you'll see are the um, green ones, and any other trend lines I draw are normally aqua in colour. These shorter ones, these are the Jag FX RD. It's a custom indicator, it's available to anyone that asks, it's in my Facebook group. It's just something I use to help filter out trades and manage trades. But at the moment we're in a short a sell on this Euro Pound, it's a high risk trade into the MAs, so we're against the trend. At the moment we're, it's against us, we've got a stop and place above this high. So we'll just see what happens here. It's not looking that good at the moment, but it's only early days. There's no sort of reversal signals as yet. Pound yen, uh, no trades at the moment. Um, and I've start drawing my trend lines in place, getting ready for possible setup. So you can see there's no confirmation there, no confirmation on the QMP filter. Uh, anytime you see a gray vertical line, it's just, an, just something, give me an idea that we've had a signal of some sort. It, it was was a buy signal here. I didn't take it. It was into the trend, and it just didn't look right. I had no divergence to help me, so it wasn't taken. Now I'm possibly looking for a sell, so I can probably get rid of that line. But there's nothing happening at the moment until we get some red dots. Could be tomorrow. Could be the next day. It looks like it wants to head down. And if we did get a sell signal there, I'd be taking it. New Zealand Swiss franc. Uh, I think I was in a buy here previously, got stopped out by looks. Now, price is continuing down. We're still potentially setting up for um, regular bullish divergence here. So we got another buy signal down here and the MACD sort of stayed up, up this level up here, then we'd be good to go again. But at the moment, no trades on. USD CAD, uh, took a new trade this morning, a buy here. Um, you can see the regular bullish divergence, clearly marked, green QMP dot, green dot on the MACD Platinum, or blue dot on the MACD Platinum below the zero level divergence. Uh, probably the thing I was sort of hoping for is a break of this trend line to the upside, that trend line. You can see it looks like it's in a downtrend, you could even make an argument there's a bit of a channel, sort of, for you channel traders there, bouncing up and down this channel. Not really my thing, but you can see it. Uh, ideally, I want this to break through. If not, I might be in a bit of strife. Got to stop in place. You can always slow down these videos or pause these videos and just have a look at my notes. I always write notes on the charts there. Euro CAD in nothing at the moment. Possibly setting up for a sell by looks. Here's a grey line with a. I've got a red dot on the MACD platinum above the zero level. Start to draw my possible divergence lines in. So uh, nothing doing at the moment. Aussie USD. Pretty sure. I think I took the buy here, stopped out, and it's gone back down again. I'm still looking for buy. Very similar to the what was the other one we looked at before? One of those other ones where there's still divergence possibly setting up here if we get another buy signal to the upside. But at the moment, and no trade again. We're looking for a buy so I can get rid of that line. 
Euro Swiss, nothing doing here. Um, I'm starting to like what I see on this um, low here. So I don't think I'll be taking a sell now if it sort of sell signals back here. I didn't take it. Um, now, if this bottom holds here, we'll have a good double bottom here if it holds. It, you know, it's a fair chance it may not. Not sure what's the. Oops, wrong way. Yeah, there's nothing much to the left there. I've just seen if there's any. If it's a support, major support level or anything like that. No, just back here, that's about it. So, possibly the double bottom there, I don't know. Then we'll start looking for a buy. If they, a buy, if that's the case. Um, I didn't take the sell, I think mainly because it didn't go up close enough to the uh, MAs for my liking. And the entry would have been about this level here, and we're only you know 60 pips away from that low. And I'm not sure if there's bullish Jag FX RD at the time, because that does readjust, so it could have been on this candle. Combined with that and the big gap here, that's probably why I didn't take it. So, so be it. New Zealand Yen didn't take the trade here either. Um, it's set up for a sell. Not sure why I didn't take that one. It'll probably, oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> it's written right in front of me. No bearish Jag FX ID. We've only still got bullish, it was the last one, the blue ones here. Ideally, if I'd seen some orange ones here, I would have taken this sell trade. But there was none, like I said, it acts as a bit of a filter for me. If it's not taking it, if there's no um, bearish Jack FX ID, it's for a reason. It's pretty accurate when it comes to tr taking trades with or without it. Generally, 80% of the time, if it's not presenting, it means don't take the trade. So, yeah, it could go down, but that's one of the things that's keeping me out. So that's a New Zealand yen. Uh, USD, Swiss franc, nothing doing. Very decent big drop after a fair lot of sideways action. Possibly looking for a move to the upside, but nothing on it at the moment. Pound USD in a buy trade back here, already closed out half. Uh, when price got up near the MAs and we had bearish Jag FX RD. Now it start, looks like it's rolling over. My stop's above my entry level, so I can't lose anything. But in the meantime, looking for a possible sell. It's a bit of a gap there from the weekend. It hasn't quite filled yet, so it's something that may head up there again still. Euro USD, uh, the buyer was in down here somewhere, it's all finished, and that was a good little profit that trade. Now looking for a possible sell setup. Again, I've got my grey vertical line in, got this little level across the top here that's a, a um, resistance level. We're in the MAs now, if it rolls over, you, know, the, you can see that MACD is a good distance above the zero level, so we just wait and see on the Euro. Euro Aussie in a buy back here, already closed half, you can read my notes there. Uh, stops up pretty high now. Now, we're still waiting on a possible bearish divergence here. It's certainly on price, there's a big discrepancy. Not so much in the MACD, but still divergence at the moment. So we'll just wait and see what happens the next day or two. That's good trade, this one, good trade. Euro Yen in a sell this morning. Went down a little bit, now it's sort of pulled back to my entry. Uh, with the trend, price went up to the 240 LMA, like I said in today's daily video. And I'm hoping it could break down to the downside. Bit ugly the um, how I've drawn the trend line for the bearish divergence. But remember, highs are represented by the red dots normally on the MACD Platinum. So that's sort of this high here. It's a bit, I know it's a bit tough to see, it just looks like it's in a downtrend, but that's pull back there and that represents that high there so that's how I got the divergence it's with the trend in a way so I don't really need divergence but it all helps see how we go it's only early days all right let's keep on going before my voice gives up on me pound Swiss oh I've probably been I'm in a sell back here already closed half here's my stop I was in a buy here the stop for the buys there if I check my other charts I'm sure that would say I've stopped out so you could say I'm stopped out in the buy 
I'll probably bring this stop down on the sell a bit lower. I might do that tomorrow. So I'm thinking if I closed out the sell and took the loss on the buy, overall it'd be very profitable still. So it's no big deal, sort of a partial hedge there. But there, that buy certainly stopped out. So we're still in the sell and it's heading down. So then I'll start sort of still looking at possible another buy signal. It's still a valid buy signal too, because there's your last QMP dot right there, that green one. And I did take that on the break of a trend line. I'm not sure if it was my second one or not. Yeah. So yeah, that buy's been stopped out. I'll up that date shortly. Um, CAD Yen took a sell this morning, went down a little bit, now pulled back up a little bit just below my entry level. You can see the divergence, divergence. Stop's always done by the red dotted line. Entry level is on the intersection of those two lines there. Read my notes. MA, super tight, super flat. Look at that. Both, all three of them all jamming in on the same line there. In a cell. So just a matter of being patient. OzCAD, nothing doing here. MACD's been below the zero level a long time now. So it's trying to get up there, but it's not as price continues down. So there is some obvious divergence, bullish divergence. I've drawn this trend line just to give me an idea where it's going. Definitely in the downtrend. Looking to buy next. High risk stuff though. Oz Swiss. This is one I think is a bit overextended to the downside. So I'm getting ready for a potential buy. Um, hopefully the MACD will hold here. At least give me a double bottom at worst. So give me divergence there. Then I'll be looking to take this to the, up to the upside. I'm thinking that's a long, uh, it gone a long way down that quickly too. So, so but nothing at the moment. Oz Yen, similar but not as drastic previously. Um, so again, there's still prices heading down, MACD's heading up, so it's still possible bullish divergence setting up there. There's no blue, there's no green dots under here. So at the moment, we're just waiting on possible buy signals. But in no trade at the moment. Um, Swiss franc, Japanese yen. This is another one that's gone up a long way quickly. Probably a little bit overextended to the upside. Looks like the MACD is starting to roll over now. And you can see prices sort of stalling a bit the last few days. Uh, you can see the JagFX RD bearish. MAs look like they want to turn up. They're all very tight. So possibly you're looking for a sell trade. Euro New Zealand, I'm still in this buy trade. I stopped out on my sell trade a few last week sometime. But this buy trade back here, where's that? June sometime, isn't it? Yeah, 6th of June. Um, and the price is still going up. MACD is still going down. So again, we still be, could be looking for sell trades here. And we'll just keep on moving this stop up on the um, on the buy trade and locking as much profit as possible. You know, that's that's got in at 16744 roughly and it's at 174344-ish to stop. That's a big, big move. CAD Swiss uh, in nothing at the moment. I'm looking at this level here. I've drawn a blue or aqua trend line. It possibly could be a possible support level or double bottom but you know, nothing to stop prices falling straight through that but just gives me an idea what I'm doing, what I'm looking at. It's a pretty ugly sort of chart. Not a great pair to trade, but it's, it's we do it. Uh, New Zealand USD uh, in nothing at the moment. There was a sell signal this morning. Didn't take it. There's bullish JagFX RD, and it's just oh, waking up nine hours. Sorry about that. So yeah, I didn't take it because of that, and. Uh, it, it's not a bad setup. You could have probably taken and just run it down a bit, but it's not worth the risk at this stage. I think a few of these pairs, USD pairs, are going to start to turn up. You know, you've still got um, very, uh, bullish divergence back here. So, yeah, didn't take it. Pound, Oz. Uh, in no trade at the moment. Possible setup of divergence, bearish divergence. You can see my red lines or even a possibly double top if you consider it. I've sort of drawn that blue aqua, that aqua line in there. Now there you go, what's the chances? 
uh, the aqua line to represent you see this price sort of come up come up come up come up bang come up come up and up here sort of poked through but it didn't last long it's straight back down so if there's a sell trade presents anytime soon I'll be taking it I think USD Singapore dollar took a buy this morning price came back the MAs are up, price came back to the 50, sort of bounced up, got the buy signal. I don't think it's in a, I think this uptrend is petering out a bit, sort of dying out a bit, so I'm not totally confident it's going to break these previous highs here, but if it gets up there, there I'll start taking some action. But it's all a good setup at the moment, it's with the trend sort of trade. Pound CAD. Um, there was a double bottom here, and I did look at it, but I sort of put off. I had various Jagger FX RD, were close to the MA, so I didn't take it. I'm not going to take it now, but it, it, I like this. I like these little double bottoms, and that when you see that, that's it's pretty good. But there's a bit of uncertainty with the pound at the moment, and I think Canadian interest rates. We'll have a look at the news after, but I think there's Canadian interest rate news this week too. So. Wait and see, so no trade. Pound New Zealand, so yeah, that go up. Uh, in a buy, this is the one I was in a buy, then I went, took a sell because I should have been out of my buy. Sell was stopped out and the buy still open. Um, it's not looking that strong at the moment. Look at this candle here, I thought it was going to push up a bit today. Uh, it's been going fairly sideways, this thing. I might just look at cutting my losses on this and but it's still a valid buy signal, so I'll just leave it as is, even though we've got bearish JagFX RD, which is sort of a thing that says time to take some action. But we're still in the buy at the moment, not that confident of it though. New Zealand Canadian in a buy back here somewhere. Went up a little bit, but it's just meandering at the moment. The stops in place, hasn't been threatened. I've got one red dot above the zero level, but no QMP red dot. So if I saw a QMP red dot now, I'd probably close it and wait for a possible another setup. But at the moment, it's still on a buy, losing a few pips, but nothing to be too concerned about. And finally, the Oz New Zealand in a sell back here. I think I already closed out half. Stops here. Prices come down to the 240 LMA or close to it. We've sort of got this support level here, I guess. It's definitely some. Um, bullish divergence there. You could even say it's a double bottom potentially forming. We've got um, bullish JagFX RD, so if I've got a buy signal there, I'll be taking it up, probably ditching the sell. So that's it for the high probability trades. There's not too many open at the moment, but the, the majority of them are going alright, but they could be better. So I'll just switch profiles to the Mod MACD. In the meantime, while that's swapping over, we'll have a look at the news this week. Uh, fairly quiet start to the week. Um, you can see this is Monday here, this is already passed. Uh, they're probably very quiet in the markets tonight because both Canada and the USD, uh, US are both celebrating their um, their Labor Days. So no, none of their banks will be open. Um, but probably the next news of importance coming up. 11.30 uh, local here for me tomorrow morning, which is late for the Aussie actually. Uh, interest rate, they're not expecting a change, it stayed at 1.5, it's normally what happens with this statement and what possibly later in the day when um, Lowe speaks, he's the um, All Bank of Australia and governor, governor. So, but there's no, no change, but it's normally the speeches or what they say that gives a clue to what's coming up next. Uh, there's a bit of news, you can read it yourself, GDP at Australia, and then uh, here's probably a big one, Wednesday Canadian trade balance, and followed by an hour and a half later by their interest rate news. It's at 1.5%, not expecting any change, but it could affect uh, any Canadian pairs, so just be careful there, that's Canadian interest rates. And there's statement also, same deal. Trade balance on Oz, then the Thursday, we start getting into um, employment type figures and that. And being the first Friday in the month, we've got the old, what they used to call non-farm payrolls, non-farm employment change, employment figures out of the US and employment figures out of Canada. So this is this can be a shaker and a mover, as we all know, first Friday in the month. So 
So there's a bit of news this week, Int two interest rates, a few other trade balance and employment figures. So should keep the markets happy. All right, let's switch over to the Mod Mac G. Again, you can see which trades I've got open by the extended ones and which ones I haven't. So we'll go through them all. Now, I'm trying out a new filter and that's why these lines are in place where I've got a signal but there's no actual trade in place. I just want to see if the filter's doing me any favours or not. In this case, it would have been, for now anyway. So there's no trade on, but there was a buy signal here. I didn't take it. So that's the USD Japanese Yen. Once I know more about this filter and see how it works, how efficient it is, I'll share it with you and we'll discuss it further and we'll talk about it. Right, pound yen. Again, there's a buy signal back here on that blue dotted line. I didn't take it and looks like it saved my bacon in the filter here, which is a good thing. Mind you, I could have probably got a few pips there. That's 240 pips nearly, so I don't know if the filter did save me. USD CAD uh, in a cell back here. I did take the cell. I closed out half when price got the 240 LMA. I got a stop in place. So I think I closed out. Yeah, closed out two thirds of this. Sorry, not because it's a three mini lot, three micro lot trade. Closed out two thirds of it. So and there's a stop place for the final one. It looks like it's getting close to crossing and also heading up towards my stop. EuroCAD um, didn't take the buy because of the filter and prices just meandered up slowly. Oz USD didn't take the buy which saved me. Then there's a sell signal and I haven't taken that either. And it went down initially but now it's starting to pull back. So I'm, I'm not sure whether this filter's doing me any good or not, but it's certainly saving on the buy trade. And the sell trade, it could be saving. Uh, Euro Swiss franc. I'm going to trade back, sell trade back here. You can see the black dotted line is my current stop. Uh, I've already closed two thirds of this trade. Now we're at a previous low here, which I discussed in the high probability setup. So it could be a st stalling point, and it may get the stage where I'll keep on, hopefully, bring this stop down with the 25 SMA. But at the moment, looking good. New Zealand Japanese Yen, uh, I didn't take the buy back here, the filter kept me out, which is probably a good thing on this setup, and it looks like possibly a sell setup tomorrow, and, yeah, this fast MACD looks like it's definitely through, all the other criteria we met, except for the standard MACD by looks, that's it, all this remains the same, I can't see it changing much now, but again I'll look at my filter, and we'll see if that's worth the trip, taking the sell trade or not. USD Swiss franc in a sell back here. Uh, already closed out two thirds by looks. Yep, price has gone down, starting to slow down now. Stops in below the entry level, which is good. So, a good little profitable trade there. Pound USD, there's a buy signal here. Didn't take it, the filter kept me out, and which is probably a good thing right at this stage. So, it's not going anywhere, possibly going back to the downside, but who knows. Euro USD, took, there's a buy signal here, didn't take it because of the filter, and it's already turned back down. But again, you know, it's gone up 140 pips since the entry, so whether I would have taken that or not, generally I try to aim it for the 240 LMA uh, when I'm trading against it. Euro was now this is where the filter let me down a bit. There was a buy signal here, I didn't take it, and that thing screamed up there. That's uh, 330 pips. Now, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. It looks like I've made a mistake, but when you look back at the other trades that it saved me on, not such a bad thing. Look at the big picture. But then you see Euro Yen, again, would have been, this is a trade I didn't take, and that went up to the MAs, 220 pips which would have, been, would have been a place where I would have closed out half or you know, a part of my trade and it's dropped down and it could still go up again but you can see what I mean by this two, if you look here 240 LMA, 240 LMA sort of, it's like a bit of a magnet at times it's just so not sure if it's a good thing or not that filter there pound 
Swiss in a cell back here. You can see it's just meandering down. And the fast MACD is below the zero level the whole time, so it's all good. Uh, already closed that half now, just trailing the stop down. Probably bring it down as, as this 25 SMA drops down. Uh, CAD yen, another one I didn't take, it was a buy signal here, went up, yeah, went up. Oop, what did I do? That's fine. What's going on? For some reason my pip counter's not working. Well, it's gone up a few pips there before dropping down, so didn't take the trade, not in any trade there. Ozcad in a cell back here. Uh, you can see the fast MACD come close to the zero level along here, but didn't cross, so we stay in this trade. Already closed half. Now the stock's up this level at the moment. I could probably drag it down a little bit closer to the 25 SMA. It's looking good at the moment. Oz Swiss, another good looking trade. I think I'll sell back here. Already closed two thirds of it. Stops probably a long way away from the current price. But um, I'll have plenty of time to readjust that anyway, unless it's the world's biggest candle. But no, that's good. So we're in a good sell there. Oz Yen, the buy, the filter, I didn't take it, which is probably a good thing. The sell was here this morning. Uh, I had to wait for a, a second candle. Couldn't go just on the cross because it wasn't enough criteria met. So the sell signal would have been this morning. And so far, the filter's kept me out. I'm thinking a few of these Aussie pairs are going to go up to the upside. They just look like they've gone down too far, some of them, that's all. Uh, Swiss Japanese Yen here, the filter probably didn't do me any favours. You know, price has gone up nearly 300 pips there before slowing down. One I missed out on. Euro New Zealand, uh, there's a buy Remember this is the one with the big candle to get me in, and I didn't take it because of that huge candle. And I did mumble about taking a re-entry, we've got another opportunity on the but this by the time this second green um, QMP dot appeared, it was about the same level I would have got in originally, and I just thought it's too high, too far. So just let it slide basically, didn't take the trade. Hindsight, great tool in it. <laughs> CAD Swiss in a cell back here. Closed out one. Uh, oh, this morning I took just took my first bit of profit off there. It's just a um, good level, and it was if you look left, it's at that previous low also. So possible support level, sticking point. Plus it was a hundred and what's that, 150 pips nearly. Profit stop brought down, stop in place now. So I got two thirds of my trade still in play. New Zealand USD. The there's a buy there, the filter kept me out. There's a sell there, the filter kept me out of that too. So, not sure where it's gonna go yet, but not in any trade. Pound, CAD, filter kept me out of a buy trade here, which is probably regretful. <laughs> Went up, it did go against me initially, but then it shot up. Um, so, sorry, did I say pound, CAD? It's pound, Aussie. Pound, CAD's coming up next. This one, I did take a buy on this Friday, I think. In here went up a little bit but today it's come down <laughs> but it's still a valid buy signal so we just have to be patient pound New Zealand <coughs> oh, excuse me this I knew is nearly make it I uh, took the buy here I spoke about in high probability it's not looking that flash tonight uh, thought it's gonna keep on going up it's it's sort of previous highs too so yeah, I might, I should start really reducing my risk on this trade. I just don't like to look out of it at all. But we're in the buy at the moment, it's profitable. New Zealand CAD in a sell from back here. Uh, this thing's just got the world's smallest candles lately. Um, we're still in the sell, closed half already. Stops the black dotted line. I can probably bring that down a bit further. Now, it looks like the fast MACD's had a couple of goes at getting close to the crossing, but it hasn't done it yet. And Aussie New Zealand, uh, there's a sell signal here, I didn't take it. Price did make it down very close to 240 LMA, but today it's bounced up nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm not in that trade either. 
but that's about it guys for the video um, like I said just be aware this week of the news it's non farm payrolls it's two lots of interest rates yada yada you know the drill just make sure your trades and you know your stops aren't too tight or if you think you're not comfortable then either reduce your risk or either move your stops or scaling out or close your position altogether you can always get back in there's always plenty of trades and um <coughs> oh, pardon me nearly nearly fish so yeah thanks guys for watching i know it's a longer video it's probably a little bit boring my voice is a bit croaky if you like these videos please subscribe if nothing else just hit the like button all right thanks very much cheers